In today's episode, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Have you guys seen the Doomsday Map? Uh-oh. If there's a cataclysm event that happens on Earth and parts of the world flood, sea levels rise, they came out with a map that looks like this. Okay. It's America? Oh, yeah, wow. This is America. They do like the whole world, but this this shot is of America. How's Florida okay? This is America. There's, there's a lot of Florida that's gone. Like It looks like a good 40% of Florida is gone. But What about Mount Dora? I still Mount Dora's there. elevation, baby. Second highest. Second? Yeah. Yep. What's the first? Tallahassee. Oh. Actually. But this <laughs> this lady on TikTok, her name is Peggy Bolton. She did some really fun research regarding the Doomsday map. Ready? Ready. She compared what this map looked like to the land that Bill Gates has been buying. All Shut the up. farmland. Shut up. Because he is the majority farmland owner owner in the United States right now. That in and of itself is terrifying. Weird. He likes so farming, weird. guys. It's a big deal. Oh, make Bill. Oh, make Bill Gates had a farm. Then he ruled the world. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't yeah. let us live on the land when it all flooded. <laughs> she took the map of the farmland that he owns and overlaid it onto this doomsday map. Every single dry land piece was occupied by his farmland. Wait, I no, I, I mean like that makes I mean, it makes total sense that he's trying to he's planning ahead, dude. Like he's so like for instance in California. So California is basically completely underwater. Yeah, but there's these little pockets of islands. You see those? He yeah. owns those. See those? Yeah, that little one right there. That's one of his farmlands. Yep. She went as far, like, you can see she did, like, some little yellow dots where his farmlands are. Louisiana, Georgia. And, like, that compared to Zuckerberg, because oh, on this doomsday map, Hawaii is completely fine. How? Don't know. That's like, so She was, like, playing the whole thing. Like, New Zealand actually grows bigger and connects to Australia. Dude. All the billionaires There's are building be a war. bunkers. <laughs> there will be a war between those two. No, but all these billionaires that are building bunkers and then buying up farmland. And she talked about how Jeff Bezos is also buying up farmland around the U.S. That all correlates with, like, these high points in America. Yeah. And around the world. And, like, the mountain where he buried that clock in Texas, yeah. that's completely fine. It's super creepy. So we need to get a boat. Yeah. We need to build a boat. I mean, <gasps> we're according to this map, we're we're good. We're okay. gonna we're gonna almost have beachfront property, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. It does make me wonder if these multimillionaires and billionaires know more than what we know. Like, there's a certain organization that says, "Hey, this is going to happen. You might want to prepare yourself." Or if they just have the same information that we have, and they just have the financial gain to be able to buy what they need to protect themselves for if something like this does happen. I personally, if I had enough money to build a nice underground bunker, I would definitely do it because I hate hurricane season. It's the worst season ever. And if I could build a bunker that would allow me to be underground during a tornado, I would be pretty happy about that. It was darkest before the sun breaks in the morning. It's always darkest, but you know the sun is going to come up. Think of the sun. Think how dark it is before the sun comes up. When you're depressed and down and you see no hope or no way out of your condition and you're seething in these emotions, try to remind yourself do you think the sun is going to come up or is it not going to come up? The sun always comes up and that's your hope. Cling to it. Things will get better once you get over this downtime. And the difficulty is that people can't think of that when they're so depressed and so hopeless and they reach bottom. They can't visualize that things will ever get better. But for those who have courage and have faith and hope that things will get better in my life. They can look back a few years later and say, wow, look at me now. Some have it and some don't. Some will stay down. They will never get up off the floor. And others will endure and they have courage and they have hope and, and, and life will get better. It always does. If any of you are in a depressive state and just feel like there's no hope, I definitely want you to believe that there's some hope out there. Trust me, there definitely is. I've had my dark days. I know it's hard to believe. As long as you just try to look on the positive side of things, 
it will get better in time. More positivity will come to you. So just don't let yourself get too down if you're feeling down. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at the graph, 21% of the viewers that watch my videos are subscribed to the channel, while 78% of the viewers that watch these videos, they're not subscribed, but keep coming back for more content. So to the 21% that's subscribed, thank you so much. And if you're not able to subscribe because you do not have like a YouTube account or you're watching maybe on a console or TV, hey, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thanks for watching. Americans were very connected with Radium because those are the four corners. You can find Radium in Utah, you can find it in Colorado, you can find it in Arizona, and you can find it in New Mexico. You think about the four corners and the four states and those areas, there was tons of radium all in that area. Okay, well, somebody understood that they could paint themselves with radium and they could enhance their cells with radium. And the most fascinating one, which I'm putting in my book, is I found a old 1950s newspaper talking about how somebody would mix radium with terracotta clay. They would put those two together and they would create these radium terracotta bricks and they would make plants go absolutely wild. And this was shown in the San Francisco World Fair. The San Francisco World Fair Reset, where they showed technology to people that already existed and put it out there and then got rid of it completely. I've heard that radium can be extremely bad for you. I don't know if that's just a false narrative that people are providing with radium, but I've definitely heard that it can cause cancer, it can cause cataracts, it can be bad for your teeth, but I don't know. What is your thoughts about radium? Do you think that it's something that should come back or do you think that it's something that's not safe? NASA's um, universe shows a thousand mile long alien mothership from jupiter they can't explain and a See, lot of a observers are saying mile? a thousand mile long spaceship and some people are saying either we don't know what it is and some people are saying it might be an alien mothership. one thousand mile long a thousand mile long alien mothership that's near crazy. jupiter look Wait, at that thing. Is... imagine a one mile times a thousand that's a big that's ship. a huge <laughs> alien mothership that's, that's happening hey, imagine, yeah. the aliens probably have hoverboards i imagine <laughs> just going from side to side <laughs> why did they put the food court on the other end they why the, would they not put it in the middle they got the bird scooter <laughs> <laughs> imagine aliens have the same annoying problems that we have how annoying would that be like they like they have all this like scooter stuff <laughs> working they have all, like you know how all of our technology is nowhere near theirs, right? Yeah. What if like their minimal technology is like like they can't reach our like toilet paper technology? Dude, I think like, they don't know how to make fire. <laughs> I, that would be that's what we got on them. So yeah, they're like observing us, like dude, yeah, how like, we can shoot lasers and hover. It's like we have fire. They're, the aliens are like, uh, what is that? <laughs> I've heard about this object before. That is a very long piece of whatever it is. I don't know if I necessarily believe it to be a mothership or a spaceship, but it would be awesome if it was. Who knows? Maybe aliens have technology to cloak themselves to look like chunks of space rock and things like that. That would be pretty fascinating. I would like to see a little bit more on this because I feel like it's just too hard for us to explain and f for us to understand because it's so far out into space. We might even be wrong on the size for all we know, but it is still a very interesting topic. Mount Hermon. Oh! In the Book of Enoch, 200 angels, watchers, descended upon the top of Mount Hermon. But this man, Sir Charles Warren, he like was the chief of police for like London or something. He wanted to go to the Israel-Palestine area and map it out. And he made it to Mount Hermon. And he said there was this giant ancient temple, this spiral thing. And he said at the center, it appeared to be like an altar for sacrifices. But up there also was this giant stone tablet with these carvings and writings on it. They brought it back to England, but then the British Museum put it in the archives no one is allowed to go and do research on it wow. but today at the peak of mount Hermon is a un lookout post kind of thing if you're not high ranking you cannot go up there they have banned any archaeological digs <gasps> 
<gasps> anything around that area. Oh, oh man. Not cool. What's Terrible. crazy too is some biblical scholars theorize that the transfiguration of Jesus also happened at the top of Mount Hermon. If the watchers descended upon this place, is there like a weird portal? It's certainly a place where that veil is thinner. Yeah. That's crazy to think about. This might be a little off topic. Being that we're starting to get into the ether and we're talking about energy now lately within the last couple of episodes... I am starting to find that maybe the top of these mountains, probably where you get the most amount of energy and power. So why would they not have some kind of ritualistic site or a teleportation site on the top of mountains? Because that's where the most amount of energy is. That, that makes a lot of sense to me. But as far as what this theory is talking about, I, I don't know if I necessarily believe it or not, but it does lead me to believe that, you know, top of mountain peaks probably have a lot of energy. If you don't have home security systems, cameras, I highly recommend you put them up. You really don't know what's outside your home prowling. Take a look at this family's home. They captured something on their side of their home that looks almost like a rake or a night crawler. Whatever it is, it's humanoid, but it's animalistic, and it's terrifying. Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think it could be. I don't know, but if I seen that on my camera system, I would be pretty terrified, but extremely interested as to what could that be. It sounds kind of like a pig. It looks massive. I mean, you can't really see it very well, but the figure that you see behind the bushes looks fairly large. I'm curious to whether this is real or fake because... I can't tell, really. What do you guys think? Do you think that this is some kind of creature? I, I know a lot of people are saying that the, the closer we get to the eclipse, the more stuff like this we're going to see, probably because the eclipse is going to cause some kind of opening for other dimensional beings to be able to easily slip through. But this, I would be pretty, pretty scared if I seen this on my camera system. These are not just round stones. They are 96% perfect in their spherical form. That's not something that's created by the Earth. The near-perfect measurements of the stone spheres convinced Dr. Osmanagic that they were carved by artificial means. And in 2016, he sparked controversy when he announced that he believed they originated with some unknown civilization. Who made it? We don't have precise answers, but we know that they were made by ancient builders. Why granite never comes in spherical shape in nature. If the stone spheres are not naturally formed, as Dr. Osmanagic suggests, when were they made? I've always found these really interesting. I've seen a few videos where they show a bunch of these have been discovered across the world. I would love to know more about them. I would like to know the history. I mean, I'm sure everyone would. But to have these massive chunks of rock that's just been shaved to, to an almost perfectly rounded sphere, it's just pretty incredible that this kind of stuff exists. And just the stories that are behind it have to be amazing. What do you guys think about these? Do you think that these are some kind of extraterrestrial devices? Do you think that these were just made by man back in the day for decoration purposes i mean we kind of do this stuff today but just thinking that this was maybe a thousand plus years ago it's pretty impressive so in 2018 scientists discovered a black hole really really far like i, I want to say it's like 16 million light years away something crazy what? super far from us they're watching it literally swallow a star Oof. it was sucking a star in did it move or the star move the star was getting sucked into this black like so it was just like light streams going into this black hole. And where is it going what they thought they knew of black holes, well, they don't know a lot, but it's just like stuff gets sucked into it because it's just this mad force of gravitational pull that just sucks everything in. But this year, they looked at the same black hole and it was spitting the star back out. <gasps> 
like so light and stuff was coming out of this black hole, regurgitating this star. Just but recycling like, it. Like broken apart, though. So it's like, what's on the other side of that black hole? I thought a star was just a ball of gas. It is. But light and stuff was coming out of it. So it was like it sucked the star in with the light, like the fire, all that, whatever a star is. And it was spitting it straight back out That's three terrifying. years later. Yeah, that made me question a lot of things. It always irritates me a little bit that we have scientists that know so much about black holes, but yet we've never personally seen one up close. We've never been able to test with them. It always bothers me a little bit because we really don't know, but there's so many scientists out there that are so firm on their theories that that's fact at this point. So it's hard for me to believe that black holes just consume so much and there's nothing that happens. There's got to be something that happens. And who knows, maybe black holes actually have a bigger purpose than what we theorize them to have. There might be an exit point on the other side that leads to alternate realities, different dimensions. Who knows what there is truly? We really don't know until we're able to test them out ourselves. But I, I've always found it interesting that we have so many hard claims on black holes and we really just don't know anything about them. Leave a comment on your guess. I would love to hear some good theories about your ideas of what a black hole is because I know there's got to be tons of people with different ideas and theories of what a black hole really is. The following footage is unbelievable, and if they had not captured this on camera, nobody would believe them. A couple of people were out hiking in Meteora, Greece, when one of them captures something, something crazy, what looks like a giant skull wedged in between two canyons. Now, I've zoomed in, I've zoomed out, changed the coloring, and to me, it truly looks like a skull and not some sort of weird rock formation. But take a look at this footage. Tell me what you think. Could this truly be a giant skull in Greece? I'm not going to lie. At a distance, it definitely looks very much like a skull, but... It also kind of looks like a rock, so I can't say for certain. I just wish that at this point there would be a drone that would fly out to it, get a really good close shot of it just to get good solid evidence because it could just be a rock that just looks like a skull from the distance, but it really does look like a skull. And if it is, it looks like it could be a very big one. So potentially a skull of a giant that maybe slipped and fell and just got caught in a bad spot. I really don't know. Leave a comment on your guess because to me, I think it's a rock, but it really looks like a skull. Listen. Whoa. Stay inside, baby. What the fuck is that? Oh, really? What the fuck? Please tell me you guys hear this. Wait for it. What the fuck? So there is a pattern. The first one was in Benf, right? So check this out. So we have these mountains. Follow them over down here to Colorado Springs. And then we have it also happening in Quebec and Montreal. So we have a, tri a perfect triangle. Someone is building something, but why? Check this out. This is Montreal, Quebec. It definitely sounds extremely mechanical. It does not sound like it's natural at all so i'm wondering if maybe they're just 
building something underground that's just the sounds of excavators going underground i really don't know what this could be in china they have successfully combined human genes with monkey genes and have started growing babies like are they like denim what what but like they said like spain and american scientists are like coming to china to like observe it because it's illegal illegal well let's get in on it the whole point of it is to grow them so that they could harvest human organs for transplants and stuff so are you saying this is kind of like the technology that we talked about previously like them get, make, just making humans and but they're taking the ape Monkey. dna and human dna yeah. they're taking that same technology but doing it with the animals yeah and they successfully grew it i think it's happening naturally like they're they are getting these monkeys pregnant it's possible but they were successful and they killed the embryo after it being alive for 20 days because they're like well we don't actually know if it's going to have like a human brain because you can't control like what organs will grow it's a bad time to realize that yeah it's like yeah Wait a second. This so, monkey is going to have a human brain. That's like an astronaut, like his dream to become an astronaut. And he just gets in the rocket ship and he's literally on his way to space. Like, Wait. I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> I don't know how to run any of this. This is pretty crazy. And I've heard about this before. And it led me to ask if monkeys can breed with humans. And the same response on Wiki, all of the other websites always say that it's highly unlikely but they never confirm it's impossible. So it does make me wonder if there's some sort of interbreeding or if they're just DNA extracting and then adding to the eggs of monkeys or humans. It, this could be a very scary future. If they're trying to make genetically modified super soldiers, things like that could very much be the case with this. And they say that they're terminating the experiments because they're developing certain parts of their body that they don't have control over, but are they really? When I came across this video, it piqued my interest in so many ways. A group of friends had went out caving, and as they were high up on the cliffs, they found this interesting cave and decided to investigate. As they enter the cave and start looking around, they find a metal gate was placed at the back of the cave, and it basically closes you off from entering any further. There are so many red flags about this. One, there is no mine in the area. Not official anyways. Two, it's a newer gate. So this secret facility is in use. But by who and why? Take a look at this footage and tell me what you think. What is that? Yeah, that's red. They're talking about... Dude. Cowboy for stuff in here. No, it's a gate, man. Oh, it's a gate. I mean... Uh, what the heck? That temple, you know? Yeah. What the heck? CCM? Huh. Okay, so there's probably a big cave back here. Gotta be. But I guess we won't be getting in that. Dang. That's Dang, crazy. Dude. Someone dragged all of this in here and built a gate. That's crazy. Right? It's so deep in here, too. Yeah, and there's that lake over there, too. Dang. It's dedication. Mm-hmm. That is pretty crazy that I don't, I don't know how far down they are in this cave system but that would be pretty interesting nonetheless this is why i'm i'm the drone guy i will carry a drone with me everywhere i go because i would definitely pull out a drone and start flying it through there just to see if i can't see something a little bit further past our sight because there's got to be something there right i don't know what ccm means maybe some of you guys know what that is leave a comment down below letting me know if you do because i have not a clue what ccm could stand like creatures captured monsters i don't know something something is up with ccm leave a comment let me know what you think it is a lot of people see three numbers in a row mm -hmm. very very frequently they're personally called, they're called angel numbers so i i personally see 444 at least five yeah. five different times a day some people see three through three i just saw one 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 in the chat what are what are the reasons that people see these so, three numbers so, so, so here's the thing that, that cannot be coincidence no no of course not here's the thing Everyone sees those numbers. Most people just aren't aware of it. They think of it's a coincidence. You have a soul and your soul has evolved to the point where you can see the matrix that signals. This is all virtual reality and call the matrix, but the matrix talks 
and its language is numbers. So it sends certain numbers out there, and if you know how to interpret them, you know what they mean. So for instance, when it comes down to 333, three is the number of communication. So when anyone sees those three numbers together, they have to basically start communicating more. Whatever means necessary, whether it be going to a party, you have to be more social. If someone sees 555, five, five, it might be a baby on the way. But when it comes down to a five is the number of sexual energy. When people see 666, six, six, six is the number of family. If that's oh some kind of- Oh my God. People, most people think that's a negative number. Is that why they make it yeah, so exactly, negative? Because exactly. they're against it's, the family exactly. unit. Exactly, so it's not just that, but think about it this way. 666 six, six is not the number of the devil. Okay, there might be a devil. I'm not saying he doesn't exist, but 666 is not the number. 666 is the number of time itself. 60 minutes in an hour, six and zero six. 60 uh, uh, seconds. seconds in a minute, six and zero six. In 24 hours in a day, there is your 666. I definitely always see different angel numbers, if that's what you want to call them, uh, that keep coming across my paths over and over again. Uh, also, I want to bring up real quick. I've I've noticed in my comments a lot of people are saying a lot of people are saying that is this a religious channel because I have so much religious content on here things like that. I do want to go ahead and clarify this is not a designated religious channel. I am not trying to force feed anybody into religion. I just personally find this stuff extremely fascinating. So if any of this ever bothers you, I, I promise you I'm not trying to preach to you or have any of these videos preached. To you about religion i just personally find it interesting and if i find it interesting i like to record it and then react to it because maybe someone else will find it interesting but i do see a lot of comments of people saying that it is a little off-putting and they don't feel very comfortable with so much biblical talk and uh, just leave a comment down below on your thoughts on this if it's something that is making you uncomfortable or if you want me to lean towards not having so much forceful information like this really wasn't forceful but i have played some where they're extreme like oh you have to believe in this and that that does seem a little preachy just let me know how you feel about this type of content if this was too much or if i need to dial it back a little bit more on the religious aspect which i personally enjoy i, I really do and i'm not necessarily a, a religious person i just like learning about it because i like learning in general you can regrow limbs or you can 3d print a, a limb and these are the technologies I was exposed to while I was in there. Huh. Uh, the technologies out today, which is interesting, is like the fourth state of water. There's some sort of energetic uh, properties of this plasma water where we were able to grow back fingers just by soaking it in the water three times a day. Gosh. So this stuff is out there, but they can't talk about it. And they're not going to write white papers on it because it works too well. So I think light therapy is going to be the newest thing because... There's a way to cure the body just by using different types of wavelengths of light. Like there's a, a, another device out there that was in the projects that just came out. And this was a IV catheter that, that's, that has a light on it. Many different colors of light. There's red, there's blue, there's green, I think. And you can stick this into your antecubital vein. And as the blood goes past this light, it activates the DNA. Okay, it activates things in the DNA to allow you to be more psychic, to allow you to be more healthy, to allow you to fight infection. In the nucleolus, when the DNA passes through the light, there's an activation. Sure. And then the frequency changes. And it's like a, it's a, it's a catalyst. The entire body now is at this different frequency. And many things are happening now in your body that you're not used to. You know, your hearing improves, your sight improves your sense of smell, you know, you, we lose about 1% of our sense of smell every year as we get older, uh, which really affects our taste. You know, if you can't smell, you can't taste. So all these things are enhanced. Are we talking about technology like that that will continue to get better and better and better? Right, see, they're using this on the surface of the skin. And, you know, what happens if you put that light inside the body? So that's what they're doing. They're allowing the blood to go, you know, through this. And even in the projects, there Jeez. were special light rooms where you just go in this room, you sit down very comfortable in these nice chairs, kind of like recliners you see in the dentist, and you go through this series of light therapy. You have to wear special goggles because the light is very, very bright. It looks like all white light, even through the goggles that are tinted but it's not, it's a color spectrum of light, but it's so bright of that color that it permeates your entire body. So it doesn't give you a suntan or anything like that, 
but it somehow allows it to affect the blood below your skin. It energizes it somehow. Yes, and the, the light is so bright, it actually passes a little bit through the dermis and into the bloodstream. I do believe that certain forms of light are really good for your body. Not saying that you should always be in them, but I do think that there is certain lights that, that can trigger a chemical response in your body for the better. What's your thoughts about light therapy? I don't necessarily believe that it can help you regrow like a finger or an arm, but I do think that it could be good for you mentally and physically for your body. Was an underground city of giants discovered in the Grand Canyon? In the early 1900s, G.E. Kincaid was journeying down the Colorado River in a wooden boat alone looking for mineral. He was some 42 miles up the river from the El Tovar Crystal Canyon. When on the east wall of the canyon, Kincaid spotted stains in the sedimentary formation. They were located approximately 2,000 feet above the riverbed. There were no trails leading up to the location, but after a long hike, he finally made it to his destination. And much to his surprise, he discovered the mouth of a cave that was being hidden by a rock shelf so you couldn't see it from the river. As he approached the entrance, Kincaid noticed steps that led 30 yards down the side of the canyon. He concluded that where these steps ended must have been the water level at the time these caves were last inhabited. As he'd make his way into the entrance, he'd notice hieroglyphs on the walls. These markings would pique his curiosity, so he decided to enter the cavern. During this first trip, he went several hundred feet into the main passage, until stumbling upon a crypt where he'd discover mummies, one of which he'd stand up, illuminate with his flashlight, and snap a picture. After gathering a number of relics, Kincaid would make his way back down the Colorado River to Yuma. From there, he sent the relics to Washington, explaining his discovery. This is when the Smithsonian would get involved and explorations would be undertaken. Hey, this was a pretty interesting one. I've never heard of giants potentially being in the Grand Canyon, so that was a new theory to me. And the fact that there might have been giants in the Grand Canyon, that kind of makes sense. Like, why wouldn't there be? Like, there's enough space down there for them to live comfortably, I would think, depending on how massive the giants are. There should be enough space down there for them to live fairly comfortably and to keep hidden away from other people. Also, probably have certain ways to get further down into the earth, and that's kind of the reason why governments are trying to keep people out of the Grand Canyon, is because there's probably still giants that live there. Pretty interesting theory. All right, we're gonna get weird, because I wanna tell you about the very real anti-gravity research the US military started funding in 2001, and the subsequent disappearance of the scientist behind the breakthrough that started the program. Back in 1991, a Chinese-American physicist named Ning Li joined up with another physicist named Douglas Tor out of the University of Alabama to publish a series of papers outlining their theoretical approach to anti-gravity. Now, according to these peer-reviewed papers that cost me a hundred bucks to get my hands on, their theoretical approach to what they called a practical anti-gravity effect called for rotating ions in a specific way to create a gravimetric field that was perpendicular to the axis of their spin. And by aligning those spinning ions properly into something they called a Bose-Einstein condensate, which is a unique form of matter, they claimed they could produce a strong repulsive force that would counteract gravity. Now, these papers were strictly theoretical, but in 1997, Ning Li published another paper outlining very real results from a low-power test that she and her colleagues conducted inside their laboratory at the University of Alabama. According to that peer-reviewed paper, they consistently measured an anomalous weight change of a test object suspended above a rotating superconductor, ranging from 0.05 to 2.1% of its overall mass. Now, reducing the weight of an object by 2% won't make it float around the lab, but nonetheless, this low-power test seemed to be legitimate proof of concept for Ning Li's theories. And two years after this paper was published, Ning Li decided to leave the University of Alabama and strike out on her own, starting a company called AC Gravity LLC. And she was not alone. In fact, the chair of the university's physics department quit his job and went to work for her at AC Gravity. 
Within just 18 months, they managed to secure their first Defense Department contract. And after a fair bit of digging, I managed to get a hold of some of the language associated with that award. The contract was for $448,970, which, adjusted to today's inflation, is just shy of 800 k The document even goes on to discuss the potential implications of this effort, stating plainly that if successful, the payoff would be, quote, enormous going on to say that it could lead to the development of new forms of propulsion, new guidance systems for missiles and gun-launched projectiles, new ways to counter inbound missiles that use inertial guidance, ways to lighten heavy equipment, and a whole lot more. But the document also says that if the experiments aren't successful, then they can eliminate this line from future efforts and finally put to rest the controversy surrounding these theories. But... We don't know the outcome of these experiments. All we do know for sure is that after the conclusion of this contract in 2002, Ning Li continued to work for the U.S. military for years. She made only one more public appearance, attending a conference the following year where she gave a presentation on her AC gravity theories, joined on stage by one of her colleagues, a U.S. Army officer from the Redstone Arsenal, assigned to the Army's Aviation and Missile Command. And after that, Ning Li just disappeared. Nobody saw her or her work again pop up anywhere in the academic world. And by 2008, people were beginning to come up with conspiracy theories about what must have happened to this anti-gravity physicist. The prevailing theory was that she returned to China with her technology to continue her work for the Chinese government. But I can now tell you for sure that that never happened. In fact, the Chinese government did approach Ning Li in 2008, and she rejected their offer. And as a result, the Chinese government barred her from re-entering the country to attend her mother's funeral. Ning Li continued to work for the Department of Defense at the Redstone Arsenal and the University of Alabama campus until 2014, when she was tragically hit by a car, suffering brain damage that left her bedridden for the remainder of her life. Now, there is a whole lot more to the story of Ning Li and her research, and I have a much longer video about this topic that just went live on that other video platform. But suffice to say that Dr. Ning Li was no pseudoscientist. I honestly can't say what came of her anti-gravity research, but I can say that whatever came of it seemed promising enough for the U.S. military to continue funding her efforts for the remainder of her working life. To be a scientist like this would probably be pretty scary because there's gonna be people that are wanting to come after you for your technology, for your ideas, and for your brain, basically. So it's a shame that she had China approach her and she declined their offer and then they just rejected her from coming back to China to even go to her mother's funeral. That's that's a shame. It is pretty interesting that this is a fact. If it's the case, I have not done my own research to even see if this is true or not. But if it is, this is pretty interesting because she went through a lot. I find that marijuana condenses your vibration. Think about it like taking a sponge and squeezing it closed. Vibrationally, that's what it does. And condensed vibrations are not bad vibrations. So here's an example. So like marijuana has been um, studied to show that it helps people with PTSD process their PTSD or just helps them live a more fulfilling life. So what's happening is, is that the mind under PTSD is really overactive. It is very overstimulated. It is much more active than like quote unquote a normal brain. Kids and adolescents who have been exposed to traumas or adults who have been exposed to traumas, um, they'll tend to have a more overactive brain. Marijuana with the condensed vibration can condense your brain down to a level that's a little bit more stable so that you can get through your life. And when it comes to condensing, I mean, marijuana is a plant. Plants are grounded and they're rooted. And the way that I think about marijuana is that it is a plant that's rooted in the earth and that basically it can help root you in the earth. So like for me, I've always had a hard time like focusing and studying. And then what happened was when I started using it actually condensed my brain down to a level where I was like, ow, now I can actually have enough energy to be able to sit down and be able to like focus. That's what I mean by that like grounding. It brought me from this place of like, I need constant stimulation to like, okay, um, I can now study and the information digests easier. And while that is very controversial, if it works, it works. That's my opinion. But vibrationally, yes, it absolutely condenses your vibration. But again, condensed vibrations aren't necessarily bad. And also I think of it almost like a tool. It's like a molecule that is going into your brain and changing the way that your brain is structuring. And most pharmaceutical medications do that as well. It's one difference to understand 
excited about like marijuana versus like pharmaceutical medications is that marijuana is a psychoactive medication. And yes, pharmaceutical medications, there are ones that are psychoactive, but I just felt like I needed to include that. And the exact opposite of this is alcohol. I've always considered alcohol and marijuana to be dualistic in a way. Like um, marijuana will condense your vibration, whereas alcohol will expand it. Like there's a saying, drunk words or sober thoughts. That's because when you're under the influence of alcohol, your inhibitions are lowered. So you are essentially acting in a way that's more expanded. You might go and flirt with that person. You might go punch that person in the face because you now have the bravery to do so. You might have some unprocessed feelings that start coming up. And that's why I like to use the terms expanding and condensing vibrations more than higher and lower vibrations because higher and lower really give a good bad type mentality in a very black and white mentality when expanded and contracted like expanded and contracted both have dualities in and of themselves generally speaking fire is the most expanded element earth is the most condensed element and too much of either is not really that good but just generally speaking vibrationally yeah marijuana is going to get you looking on the inside it's going to get you more condensed but that's not a bad thing at all like for me i'm a chronic overthinker overthinking is like an unbalanced form of expanded vibrations within the mind so marijuana brings that down to a more condensed version so that i can actually digest what's going on, on the inside also thank you for asking this question but uh, as always hope this helps love you booze and have a great day now before i really get into this topic i want to go ahead and say i do not condone the use of drugs i've had a couple of people in my comments say oh why are you condoning the use of drugs and things like that especially towards like the dmt lsd or shroom trips i do not condone the use of drugs i listen to the topics of use on drugs because I am interested in it, but I do not condone drug use. I just really enjoy listening to the topic. There is people that have good experiences. There's people that share their bad experiences. It's very educational. And to this point, I do think marijuana can help a lot of people. I do think that there's a lot of people that benefit off of it greatly. Let me know in the comments if you agree with that or if you just want me to just completely avoid putting this type of content out because I do understand where people are coming from when they're concerned about drug talk because maybe there are kids watching this content. Even though I have this stuff for 18 plus. This is not a family channel per se, just to let you know. It's not one for you to let your kids sit down and watch. I, I should have this not able to be watched by children under the age of 18. But it, it can happen still. So just let me know in the comments. Do you want me to dial it back on this kind of topic? Or do you not care that I'm just doing this? Because it's not like every video is about it, you know? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. As always, if you're interested in any of the clips that we watched today, links are in the description down below in the order that we watched them in. And with that being said, have a good day.